Ciao everyone. Today I want to discuss to you the way I mix vocals, more in the specific pop vocals. For this reason, I've designed a mini series from where I go from scratch vocals, analyzing and deconstructing each single processing plugin that I use to go from a vocals that sounds rather dull and lifeless like this. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the strong survive. That's life. That's life. To something that sounds way more professional and close to the finish line like this. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the strong survive. That's life. That's life in the city. Now, if you're interested in understanding how I approach vocal mixing, I highly encourage you to stick around this video series. This video series is designed for you to actually acquire enough knowledge to understanding the why I use specific processors to mix vocals. Now, in this specific case, I'm gonna be mixing a pop song. So the processing and the vision and the type of thought process behind why I use specific processor, it's primarily tailored towards this piece of music. Now, let alone, you can actually follow and step by step understanding why I'm using specific processors and applying it to your production. Now, the song we're gonna be analyzing, it's called In The City. The song has been written and sang by an incredible New York City artist named Chetty. I highly recommend you to hear her on Spotify. I'm going to leave the link down in the description. The song has also been produced by a dear friend of mine and colleague, Jordan Yeager, phenomenal producer, and I highly encourage you to check him out. Now, what is it you're going to be learning within this video series? A, the first rule, which has to do with how and why we use specific tools. We're going to be covering machine learning tools, such as Waves Vocal Silk. We're going to be covering dynamics. EQ, parallel processing, effects. All of this done by only using Waves plugins. Now, this is a mix that I've done in 2014, and I've decided to reopen this mix due to the challenges that I had in making sure that this song could actually stand the chance to be competing against other competitors within the market. Now, if you're interested in using Waves plugins, in your productions and bringing your vocals to the next level, I highly recommend you to stick around until the end of this video series. One very important thing, I'm going to be uploading my vocal chain, everything I am using within the session, onto Wave Studio Rack. What that means is that you can go and download my vocal chain for free within your session and start tweaking the processors and kind of like experimenting with the same processors that I have here with your productions. Now, without any further ado, let's deconstruct the sessions and welcome to Mixing Pop Vocals 101 with Waves. So today we're gonna dissect the mix I did for a song called In The City from the artist named Chetty. And I'm gonna talk about a little bit how, how I remix the song. This is a mix that I have done for this album that came out in 2014. And I wanted to take upon the challenge of remixing the song actually using some of my brand new favorite Waves plugins. I'm gonna give you a little glimpse of the song called In The City. Yeah. 
So you get the idea. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually mute the mix I did. So what I've done, I've actually gathered all my stems within one, two, three, four, five tracks uh, and actually have a VCA assigned to it. And then the rest is just vocals. So I'm gonna go ahead and once again reiterate how the vocals were sounding before and then after. I'm gonna go ahead and mute my instrumentations, my effects. Highlight all my vocals. And this is how my vocals sounded before I mixed it. After. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. My life, my life, yeah. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the strong survive. That's life, that's life. In the city, oh, in the city. In the city, in the city, All right, in context with the action music, before and after. Only with processing and I understand there's going to be a little bit of discrepancies in vocal, in, um, in actual volume. Um, so only with the processing without the effects. With effect. So as you can understand, there are a lot of moving parts in building this puzzle. And the very pillar of the song lies in how Chetty performed her song. So there is a lot that we got to grasp in order to connect her music emotionally to an audience. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually mute the instrumental. And I'm going to be focusing on only on her lead vocals. This is how the lead vocal sounded before my treatment. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. My life, my life, yeah. After my treatment. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. My life, my life, yeah. Can't help but feel. All right. Let's start analyzing first and foremost what are the problems within this performance. I mean, the performance is great. It's just the sound of it that is a little bit too muffled, and that has to do a lot with the proximity upon which the performer is actually singing to the microphone, the type of microphone, the signal path, and a lot of other conditions. So our job as mixers is actually to improve this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mute for a second with shift Q all my sends so that we're only gonna be left with our um, effects. 
as you can see here, I'm using a little bit, maybe too many processing. This is not definitely something that I would do in every single mix. But what I've used for this specific vocals is just a tiny bit of processing at a time. Remember, every time we're trying to build something, it's not having one processor taking care of everything. It's mainly having a series of processors taking care of small parts and all together they're actually going to be ready for tailoring the best sounding, in this case, vocals that we're after. So I'm going to go ahead and dissect my vocals, muting everything else. Um, I'm going to go a little bit maybe closer to the actual chorus. Let's get here. Again, incredible performance. But in order for us to having her on top of the song and kind of like leading the song, emotionally connecting with the audience, we have to make these vocals being part of a pop record. We have to make it sound professional. Now, there's no easy way to do this, let alone there's no tricks, no shortcuts. It's just about your taste as an engineer and how well you know your tools. Now, to mix these vocals, in this specific session, I've only used Waves plugins. I haven't used anything else that is not a Wave plugin. Um, and actually, I'm going to start with the first processor that I have here. This is Wave Silk. Now, Wave Silk is an incredible, incredible plugin because allow us to tackle three primarily area of the spectrum, which are lows, mids, and highs. And with a very smart machine learning EQ allows you to kind of like automatically spot the most annoying and resonances that cluster the vocals in these three areas and tame it down intelligently. That means that it moves and locate the notch filters approximately where the nuances of annoying frequencies are. Now this plugin is divided as I said in three sections and what is really great is that you can actually pull up the advanced settings to kind of like work with a little bit of a mix, so dry and wet, more of a parallel processing, and actually tell the detector how sharp or smooth the actual uh, cutting points are and how fast these changes should happen. Now, I'm going to let you hear before and after, and then I'm going to dive in a bit more into this plugin. So this is the vocals before. That's live. This note over here is what we want to tame. But again, we don't want to use a pure EQ to do this because perhaps the problem that arises within this frequency range, it's only on this specific note. So I don't want to remove everything out of these vocals. I want to just having a device that intelligently spots where these problems are accordingly to the part of the song. So, once again, before... Life in the city. After... Life in the city. In the city. The great thing is that this device allows us also get a Delta feature to audition the parts. Great thing is that it works as a great de -ester. Before, my initial plugin would have always been a de but in this specific instance, Silk is actually attenuating all the harshness that comes from vocals. In a very nice and musical way. Focus on this la. I know I'm not a singer. La, la. There's almost this frequency that kind of like hurts your nose, right? With silk on. La, la, 
And as you can see, it actually goes even a little bit below 300 hertz just to tame that very nasally low end, which I'm gonna let you hear with this audition tool. So still kind of like start positioning and making my vocal sound less, less harsh. And I would say kind of like removes the problematic area at first glimpse. And what this plugin even gives you is the ability to add a compressor. Now this compressor works really close to the same way our Vox works. Super simple to use, the lower you bring this actual knob, the more you're gonna be compressing the vocals. I'm gonna try to bring it back to where it was, minus 2.7. I'm gonna give you another before and after. So I feel like all these frequencies have actually been taken under control. All my S's and weird resonances have been tamed down. So the vocals is already in a much better shape for us to keep tweaking um, what we don't want first. So generally, the way you see my chain built on, and then I'm actually gonna be posting this chain onto Studioverse, so for everyone that wants to download this exact vocal chain, you can go ahead and download it. All my plugins prior to my actual last plugin in the chain are there to control the vocals. My last plugin, it's a bit more coloration. So next in line, we have my trusty C4, which is a fantastic multi-band compressor. And again, the ability of this compressor has to do with the fact that you can actually tweak the attack and release upon the rhythmic value of the vocals. And what I'm doing here, since this specific vocals has a lot of upper mid range within the 1.5 to almost 5 kilohertz, I use this plugin to tame that frequency range even further after Silk. Um, I'm going to show you the before and after. After. There's life in the city, in the city. Life. Before. There's life. You hear there is this frequency that kind of like almost comes out of the speakers and lets you detach emotionally with what you're listening to because all of a sudden you are prompt to a very unpleasant sound, which is this specific frequency range which if you want to hear it via this plugin, I can actually solo the range before applying multiband compression to it. And the range I'm referring to is exactly this one. So before multiband. especially on this la with There's life in the city in the city la la without la you hear after You hear how much more pocketed it is, it's way more contained, so that now we can actually bring the vocals forward without, or actually avoiding, the fact that these frequencies are gonna be poking out too much. Now, next in line, I generally work with serial compression. What do I mean by that? I will actually use two very distinct compressors in series. And this is a classic trick that a lot of engineers do. Um, this has to do with using a very fast uh, field effect transistor compressor, such as the CLA-76, and then followed by 
a much more warmer and slow behavior tube compressor, the CLA-2A. Of course, the CLA-76 mimics the way that uh, Universal Audio Uray 1176 works, and the CLA-2A, of course, the LA-2A uh, compressor, Teletronics. Now, the way I set these two up are for two specific reasons within the performer. Now, the first one, the um, CLA-76, is a field effect transistor compressor, and what that means in very blunt language is that is an extremely fast compressor that can also add a bit saturation if pushed too much. Now, the ability of this compressor is that it's not only a compressor, it's actually a limiter compressor. So in this case, I'm using an extremely high ratio of 20 to 1, fast release, and a fast, I would say, almost medium attack. Now, this first compressor, I'm actually going to close down one second the LA-2A, is generally used for me to tame down the picks. So I'm using a very fast compressor to kind of like bring under control only the picks. Because remember, when we talk about uh, sound, in this case, the envelope of a sound is formed by two very particular factors. The first one is the actual transient. And then we have the envelope or the rest of the envelope of the sound. Now, in this case, the difference between the initial attack and the rest of the envelope of the sound could have a difference of approximately 20 decibel. Now, what we don't know or what we don't even perceive is that this attack might happen in a span of times that is way too short for us to perceive in the way our ears perceive it, but our DAWs, our meters, if they're set to peaks, are going to just freak out. So what I want to do is kind of like to tame down all the picks of the vocals and then have a second compressor taking care of the average part of that so that everything can be a bit more level to it. So I'm going to let you hear the same part without the 1176 and then with the 1176. In a place where only the strong survive, friends life, friends life. In the city, in the city. Let's come a little closer with So you see, especially where she goes a little bit down here, where she said, in the city, in the city. I'm completely out of tune. I'm not good as chatty. But nevertheless, in the section over here, look how this compressor is kind of like taming down just the tiny bit, the loudest part, keeping the average untouched. So with this compressor, we're taming down the picks. With the second compressor, we're taking care of the average part of her vocals. So not a lot of the big picks that has been taken care of by the 1176, but the rest. So everything that is kind of like below the 1176 threshold. Let's start from a quieter part. Quite. In a place where only the strong survive, friends life. With? Can't help but feel alive. In a place where only the strong survive, friends life. Friends life. In the city. In the city. You hear how the vocals are way more uniform, so to speak. So we don't have any weird phrase or sentence that, or actually letter that sticks out too much. I'm going to let you hear actually these two in tandem so that you can actually get a better idea of their functionality. So this is without the zero compression. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the strong survive. Friends life, friends life in the city. In the city. With. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the strong survive. 
Friends life. Friends life. In the city. In the city. Life. You hear how the whole performance is way more cohesive. And we're not compressing that much. I mean, we're talking about two or maximum three dB of dynamic reduction. After this, of course, we have gained a bit of volume. But at this stage, the volume is way more, um, I would say, balanced. We are gaining a bit more, but we're getting a bit more within the RMS or the average part of the signal. Now, of course, by doing this, we have introduced a bit more sibilances.